Good morning, friends. Welcome this morning as we stream from Mount Zion United Church of Christ in York. Though we are not gathered physically in one place, we are gathered as the body of Christ nonetheless, ready to worship together in community with one another. And so it is in that spirit that I offer you this welcome. We welcome you whether this is your first time worshiping with Mount Zion or if you've been worshiping with us your whole life. We welcome you if this time together is um, one where you feel that your heart is on fire with faith or if you come to us bringing more questions and doubt than anything. Know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here and we're glad to have you join us. In this time of social distancing, we want you to know that we still want to be connected with you. Prior to the service beginning and following this service, you'll notice a graphic that displays about our upcoming opportunities to connect with you via Facebook Live or on Zoom this week. And in addition, we'll continue to send out daily devotionals this week if you need assistance finding these activities or getting hooked up to our email listserv, we encourage you to reach out to us directly at the church office. Our phone number is 717-755-6117, or you can email us at office at mountzionucc.org. We're also pulling together some volunteer opportunities that you can do from home. And so if you'd be interested in helping us make phone calls to check in on folks or do some grocery shopping for someone uh, who is in need, or doing some small projects from home, we encourage you to reach us to, uh, out to us at church. And finally, as a reminder, when we first announced to you that we would be suspending in-person in -person worship for two weeks in light of COVID-19, the Mount Zion response team and the church council indicated to you that we would make an additional announcement regarding further activities on Friday, March 27th, just again highlighting what would happen next. You can still expect to receive that announcement on the 27th at 1 p.m. You can find it on our website or on our Facebook page, and we continue to monitor the recommendations that are coming in um, from the local and state and national government, as well as public health officials and the CDC. And so as um, the response team and church council meet this week via conference call. Those recommendations will be impacting our conversations. So again, that announcement regarding worship and ministries here at Mount Zion going forward will be on Friday the 27th at 1 p.m. And so this week, though, we are continuing to worship and we'll continue our series on the I Am statements of Jesus as we remember together that Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And so let us worship God together.
Would you join now in the call to worship? Awaken from your slumber and bring your fears and anxieties into the presence of the Lord our God. Hear the call of our shepherd and allow his voice to lead us into the light of his kingdom. May the light of Christ shine into the hidden darkness of our lives and restore us for the service of God. Come, let us worship God. children's sermon, and uh, Miss Elaine, if you can zoom in a little bit, I have some things here that I wanted to share uh, with everybody at home. So um, many of you have gone by my office at some point, and you've noticed that there's one animal in my office that is represented more than any other animal. And can any of the staff guess which the animal it is? Turtles. Turtles, that's right. I love turtles. Now, my love of turtles started with the Ninja Turtles when I was a kid, and a lot of you have probably watched the Ninja Turtles since then. But it grew because my Aunt Cindy, who was very dear to me, she also really loved turtles. And so my Aunt Cindy, while she was growing up, she actually collected turtles. So that's kind of what inspired my turtle collection. So all the turtles that you see in my office, they all have special meaning to me. So this turtle here, is made out of seashells. So the shell here is one big seashell, and then the feet are all different little muscle seashells, and they're all glued together. And this one was given to me by one of our members here at Mount Zion when they went on vacation. They saw it at a gift store, and they thought, that really reminds me of Pastor Jeff, and I really, really want to give that to him. And so that, that's why that turtle was special. This turtle here is one that somebody from, again, our congregation brought me from Mexico. 
Now, it's hard to see at home, but it's got all sorts of really cool designs in the shell, kind of like you see uh, on the ruins from the uh, documentaries you see about Central America and South America. And so this one's really special because, again, another of our members brought it to me from vacation. Now, this turtle, these two turtles, they are from my Aunt Cindy's collection. Now, this one is a brass turtle, and it has a little clip on the bottom of it. And what I like most about it is it's all brass. It's all got that gold kind of color, but it has these red eyes. And they're really cool because they just stand out from the rest of the turtle. And this one, he's got his little feet and his tail and his head all attached to the shell with these little rings so that when you shake him, his head and his feet and his tail all kind of jiggle a little bit. So it looks like he's trying to go somewhere. Now, I brought my turtle collection with me today to share with all of you because our scripture reading from John talks about Jesus being the good shepherd. Now, it might not seem like there's a very easy connection between turtles and sheep, but Jesus, in the uh, text for today, says that there are sheep in other pastures, and he goes out to find them. And so I brought my turtle collection because every time I go on vacation, every time I go somewhere, I'm always looking for a new turtle because the turtles that I have are all special to me, and I always want to add a new special turtle to that same collection. And so Jesus doesn't collect us, but Jesus does the same kind of thing with us. We're all very special. We all have our own things that make us unique and special. And so when Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd, it doesn't just mean that he protects us and takes care of us, because he does do that. But Jesus also goes out and finds us. And I just think that's really cool, that Jesus goes out and finds us, but that Jesus also asks us to go and find other people that Jesus loves, to bring everyone together so that we can all be one big family. So I hope that you guys all have something at home that's maybe special to you. Um, and I invite you through this time to think about who you might want to reach out to. You can send a card. You can call someone. Um, there's all sorts of ways that you can reach out to people, even if we can't go to their houses or see each other at church. So can you all pray with me? And then I'll go ahead and I'll read the scripture. So let us pray together. Dear God, Dear God please help us. Please help us. To remember. To remember. That you're never far away. That you're never far away. Help us to know. Help us to know. That you come to find us. That you come to find us. No matter where we are. No matter where we are. And that we can be comforted. And that we can be comforted. Knowing that you love us. Knowing that you love us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for spending your time with me. And you guys can all uh, continue to watch the service with the rest of us. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to read our scripture for the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd. The sheep aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand and the sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. I give up my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that don't belong to this sheep pen. I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up. And I have the right to take it up again. I received this commandment from my Father. Here ends the reading. There's a phenomenon in social media that is sometimes called fake booking. A play on the word Facebook, fake booking is the practice of presenting a pristine or perfect life. It's like posting a beautiful picture of your child three minutes 
after they've had a meltdown, but never really presenting the fact that they had just had a meltdown. It's putting your best face forward, but to an extreme degree. We see it a lot, the way Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat kind of don't reflect always real life. Pictures tell a story. And sometimes we curate the story that we want to tell instead of the real story. Now, throughout this season of Lent, the worship team that prepared the worship services has chosen pictures to have been showing uh, one for every worship service that symbolize the I am statements that we are covering for that particular week. On week one for I am the bread of life, we had a picture of a beautiful loaf of bread for I am the light of the world. It was a picture of different kinds of light, a candle, the aurora borealis. But it hasn't been until last week and this week when we're hearing about Jesus saying that he is the gate, that he is the good shepherd, that these images include a portrayal of Jesus in them. Now, Jesus as a shepherd is abundant in the art world. And that's because sheep and shepherds are an abundant metaphor in the Bible. And most of the images of Jesus as a shepherd, they look like the one that you can see right now in the corner of the screen. Jesus is almost always basked in sunlight, standing in the warm sunshine, surrounded by cotton candy clouds, holding a ridiculously cute and obedient little lamb. And Jesus himself, he weirdly looks like he's from North America or maybe Norway, not the Middle East. And he's looking all calm and collected, smiling a serene smile, as though nothing could possibly be more gratifying than caring for these sweet, cuddly little sheep. We remember these paintings and stained glass portrayals, and we feel comfortable in the familiar imagery that's been handed down to us through the generations of our life in the church. You look at that image, and maybe it leads you to believe that being a sheep in the fold is, well, fun. Or at the very least, it's adorable. And so, what are we to think of this pristine image when we look around at the week that we've had, where the world is just massively frayed? People are stressed. Infrastructure feels like it's barely holding it together. Images like this of Jesus as the shepherd and us, his cuddly little sheep, it all feels a bit too perfect and pristine for the complicated times that we're in. Because while the stained glass image of Jesus is clean and orderly, we know that the Savior that we need is not dry cleaned and steam ironed. He's not neatly groomed. He doesn't smell a little bit like Old Spice. And we, the sheep that need shepherding, we are not fluffy and warm and cuddly right now. We are messy and exhausted and cranky and definitely not in the listening mood. In fact, if this image were honest about the current state of things, Jesus, though truly glad to be among us, he might be a little worn from the journey. He might have some unruly hair and some sweat stains and a look of concern. He might have some creases on his face from smiling, maybe some laugh lines, if you will. But he might also have worry lines and leathery skin after years of standing out in the hot sun serving his flock. Because the shepherd that we claim is not a shepherd that sits on the sidelines. The shepherd that we claim, the shepherd that he identifies himself as, is a shepherd that is in the ring with his sheep, a shepherd that lays down his life for his sheep. And that is not easy business. A good shepherd, the kind that serves as a gate, a protector, the kind that lays down his life for his sheep is the kind of shepherd 
that goes to the hard places with the sheep. He endures with his sheep. He leads his sheep even when the conditions are difficult and the sheep are unruly. And so this picture-perfect image of Jesus is starting to be peeled away, and a clearer picture is emerging. And that clearer picture, it applies not just to the shepherd, but also to the sheep. Look at the sheep in this picture. So obedient and, and cuddly, so calm and lovely. Now, I learned a little bit about sheep this week and what it means to tend sheep. And it seems that there is a misconception that sheep are dumb. But the truth is, sheep aren't really dumb. They are loyal, and they follow the voice of the shepherd whom they trust. Sheep follow their flock because they trust in the animals around them. And all the animals in the flock learn to trust the shepherd and respond to his voice. And there's a reason for this. As it turns out, sheep have terrible eyesight. They could only see about six feet in front of them. They cannot know what is ahead of them, and so they have to depend on each other for help. They have to depend with absolute trust on the voice of their shepherd to help lead them. Trusting that there's no place that the shepherd would go or would lead them that they shouldn't follow. And I have to tell you, I really needed that reframe this week because I did not feel like a cute sheep this week. I did not feel like a sheep that was perfect and pristine. I felt like a blind sheep. I felt like a sheep that could not see six feet in front of me. I felt like a sheep that found herself in unforgiven, rocky terrain. The pandemic that we are facing feels like uncharted territory. We're all facing unknowns that have us feeling concerned and unmoored. We find ourselves worrying about a virus that threatens everyone, but most especially the vulnerable. We find ourselves distraught over the empty grocery shelves and frenetic from the loss of routine. We worry about loved ones in nursing homes and rehab centers and hospitals that we can't go visit. We miss people. We miss hugging. We find ourselves worried about finances and how we'll make it if we get laid off. The sheep are restless. The sheep are agitated and wandering. So our picture-perfect image of a shepherd and his sheep has lost its color, it's lost its shiny veneer. There is no more fake booking. There is only the reality that we are sheep wandering and in need of a sturdy, dependable shepherd. And yet, here is the good news. This stained glass, this picture, is not the gospel. Hear these words again from the gospel, the real gospel from Jesus. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. They know me. I give up my life for my sheep. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. In this time of uncertainty, in this time of change, in this time of upheaval, let those words really settle in. First, let it settle in that you are not a sheep alone. You are part of a flock. You are not left to yourself. You are in God's flock. Though you might be watching this video or this image, this time of worship on the couch by yourself, you're part of a bigger flock. Though you might be watching this with a few family members, your flock is bigger still. You are part of the flock that is humanity, and you are part of the flock that is the church. This week, the flock of Mount Zion has been alive and well. I heard of you calling to check on people. I heard of you delivering groceries to someone who was high risk and couldn't go to the store on their own. 
I heard of you sending cards. I experienced you tuning into Facebook Live. I delighted in your attendance in worship last Sunday and for our Lenten Wednesday service. Some of our members of the flock are on the front lines, doctors and nurses and support staff, physicians assistants, caring for people in their time of vulnerability. Some of our flock are working hard to keep people fed. Some of our flock are making sure lights are on, our water is clean. This is all good news and it doesn't stop there because here is more. We have a flock, but we also have a shepherd, a good shepherd. And the good shepherd knows his sheep. He knows you are flailing. He knows you are anxious. He knows you are scared. He knows you're going stir crazy in your house. He knows you are two seconds away from a meltdown. He knows you are overwhelmed. He knows you are lonely. He knows. And here's what we know. We know the shepherd's voice. The shepherd's voice is the one who says, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You can find that in Matthew 11. Our shepherd says, do not let your hearts be troubled and don't let them be afraid. You can find that in John 14. Our shepherd says, surely I am with you until the end of the age. You can find that in Matthew 28. Time and time again, Christ, our shepherd's voice, tells us, do not be afraid. I am with you. Time and time again, our shepherd reminds us, I won't lead you astray. And every Sunday, we remember that our shepherd has indeed laid down his life for his sheep and was resurrected victorious. And because of that, we have hope, an indestructible hope. The truth is, the life of the sheep and the life of the shepherd is definitely not as perfect as this picture. In fact, it is messy and it is imperfect. And it's more difficult than we could have possibly imagined. But it's also real. And if it's going to be this real, then there is no one that I would rather have with me than you folks my flock, and the good shepherd who leads us. Amen.
as the Good Shepherd calls out to us each by name, going throughout the world to gather his sheep into one flock, the flock that is God's children. In our confessing, we call out to the Good Shepherd, like the sheep who are in need of being found, to let God know that we not only need to be found, that we want to be found. We confess not to emphasize how bad or sinful we are, but rather we confess so that we might grow closer to God in God's goodness. So let us join together now in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have come to us in your Son, Jesus, to be our Good Shepherd to lead us through our darkest valleys and to rest beside still waters. And yet we do not always trust your voice. We do not always follow where it is you want to lead us. We make our own paths and we rely upon our own wisdom. We are less concerned with the well-being of all your sheep and more concerned with what feels best for our individual selves. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? Forgive us, O oh God, for the times that we have followed our own ways at the expense of where you would lead us. Forgive us for the ways that our wandering has hurt others and brought uncertainty to those we love. Call to us again, let us hear the voice of our Good Shepherd, and lead us into the light of your kingdom. Amen. Friends, the good news of the Gospel is that the Good Shepherd's work is never done. And even Jesus said that the shepherd would leave the 99 sheep who are together so that the lost sheep might be found. God is forever and always seeking us in relationship and has loved us from the very beginning, loves us now, and will love us always. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have just a few joys and concerns to share with the congregation this morning, and uh, we would like to remind you that um, if you have joys and concerns to share with us during the worship service while these services are suspended, um, you can email them to us 
um, and we'll lift them up during worship if uh, we continue in this way. So first, we uh, continue to pray for Janet Abel. Uh, Janet had cataract surgery on Monday of this past week, um, and her surgery went well. She's recovering, and so we continue to pray for Janet uh, in her recovery. Dawn Almany has been asking for prayers for her friend Holly, uh, who had a lumpectomy this past Friday on the 20th. Don Dahl, uh, he has been uh, receiving treatment uh, after an infection a few weeks ago. He's been transferred back to Rest Haven. So we pray for Don's continued healing, and we also pray uh, for all of those in all of our care facilities who are unable to see their loved ones during this time. Uh, and we pray for all those loved ones who are not in the care facility who can't get in uh, to see their loved ones who are there. Uh, we pray for all of those people at this time as well. And Henry lifts up uh, the following concern. She says, in my work, I am in constant communication with both healthcare workers that are serving our seniors and Pennsylvania government officials who are doing their best to keep us all safe. They are all true heroes. Um, and also lifted up those who are in care facilities as well and their loved ones outside. Um, and finally, Anne would like to pray for those who have been exposed to COVID-19 as they wait in isolation to see if, the, if they develop the virus. Deb Barnes would like us to uh, pray to keep all the world's people safe during this difficult time. And then Jim Schiffer also lifted up a joy and a thanksgiving for this streaming service as well. Um, and we are just thankful that we have this capability um, and that it has been meaningful for all of you um, that we can connect to you uh, during this time. And so um, we lift all of those prayers and uh, will you join me now in a moment of prayer? Holy and gracious God, you call us by name and you beckon us to follow you. May we do so through your grace. We, in turn, call out to you with our prayers and faith that you will hear us and that you will answer us. And so we ask that you hear us in our prayers this morning. Like a shepherd leading the flock, you tend to our needs. Be present with those who are struggling or suffering, or who in pain or sorrow. Guide those who are lost or filled with worry and fear. Protect those who are in harm's way. Heal those who are ill and mend those who are broken as only you can. God of peace, we also ask that you watch over those who lead us in our various governments and churches. Fill our leaders with wisdom, patience, insight, and mercy. Help them to lead with kindness and strength, and most of all, with grace and understanding. God of love, fill our hearts with the knowledge of you that we can turn from the distractions of life and be more like you. May we be agents of your compassion, offering kindness and mercy to those that we meet. In that spirit, O oh God, we lift up those who have been on our hearts in prayer during our worship this morning and over the week that has been passed. We pray for Janet Abel, for Holly, for Don and Elaine Dahl, for all those who are in care facilities and for the loved ones who are outside who can't get in to see them. We pray for Deb Barnes. We pray for all those who are making difficult decisions during this time, and we ask that you might give them peace and comfort as well. And we pray for all those who are on the front lines, medical workers, doctors, nurses, hospital staff, but also our police and our paramedics and our firefighters who are also serving their communities in full capacity during this time. God, we pray that you be with these, our siblings in Christ, your children, and that you offer them your care and your comfort. God of all blessings, we thank you for all of the gifts of life. For your Son, our Savior, our great good shepherd, the one who stands at the gate of all life's challenges and joys, calling out to us in love, naming us 
you love. It is in his name that we pray to you this day. Praying the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread, bread, and forgive forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. These are strange and stressful times that we live in. In response to this season, the staff at Mount Zion has been working hard to maintain connection with you. We've utilized our streaming service to bring you worship on Wednesdays and Sundays. We've engaged with the internet so that we can bring content to you via Facebook Live and daily devotions. We've called our home-based members. We've sent out extra mailings. The work of the church is continuing, and your offerings are still needed. But friends, if you have recently lost your job, or you are experiencing financial hardship, we want to be an encouragement to you. This request for offerings does not need to land heavily on your shoulders. And I want to remind you that we have gift cards to grocery stores available in the church office if you need them. We are here to help. If you find yourself in that position, please reach out to me or Pastor Jeff directly, and we will find a way to safely get those things to you. We want to be a resource. For those of you who are blessed with continued employment or sustained income, we ask that you would continue to faithfully give to our church. Though in many ways it feels like the world is standing still, we all know that bills keep showing up, and financial commitments remain. Thank you for taking the time during this offertory to make ready your contribution to our church. You can mail it directly to us, or you can drop it off in the mailbox that's across the street. If you're interested in e-giving, you can find the form on our website, or you can call us directly in the church office, and we can um, help to get you set up. E-giving is certainly one of the ways that we are able to weather this time, as are all the gifts that you are offering. And so whatever way in which you can give, please know that we are grateful and we thank God as together we lift those gifts to our Good Shepherd.
Let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. troubling times, we still find reason to hope. We hear the voice of you, our shepherd, and we find peace, we find direction. We are so grateful, God, for the gifts of a church family. We are grateful for the opportunity to continue serving and giving and sharing your love. We offer ourselves to you that you would make us instruments of your peace and that through us we might shepherd others to you. We offer our gifts to you and ask that you would use them to expand your love and influence in the world. We offer it all in gratitude. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born in the Spirit, washed in Christ's blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my this time of worship, may you enter your week with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for the shepherd who guides you, for the shepherd who loves you, and for the flock, the people of God who are with you. Go in peace, dear ones. We look forward to seeing you on Facebook Live tomorrow at noon, to connecting with you on the phone, and to worshiping with you again on Wednesday evening. Please stay in touch. Let us know how we can support you and know that we love you. Go into this week committed to loving and serving the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.